get, the less nitric oxide we make through the nitric oxide synthase, meaning that the older you get, the less efficient you become at converting arginine into nitric oxide. Now this is important because there's a number of nitric oxide products on the market that have L-arginine. So you never lose the, uh, the, you never become deficient in arginine, you just lose the ability to convert it to nitric oxide. So what these four independent studies show that, you know, by the time you're 40 years old, you only have about 50% of the nitric oxide you had when you were young. So it's, we thought, well, if you can prevent the age-related decline in nitric oxide production, can you prevent age-related disease? And the answer is yes, and I'll take you through that. So when you become deficient in nitric oxide, or you lose the ability to produce nitric oxide through either pathway, uh, these are the clinical consequences. You develop high blood pressure, you develop sexual dysfunction, vascular dementia, Alzheimer's, diabetes, peripheral artery disease, small vessel disease, things like Raynaud's syndrome, atherosclerosis, blood clotting disorders, acute respiratory distress syndrome, heart failure, kidney injury, immune dysfunction, again, susceptibility to infections. So it appears to me that every single human chronic disease, the things that really drain the healthcare system uh, in the economy, is related to the treatment of chronic disease. And all of these are due to insufficient nitric oxide production. So if you can just fix this one thing, nitric oxide production in the human body, you can basically affect and control and better manage every single one of these chronic diseases. The next little project was on mechanisms of nitric oxide. It's anti-aging. It's known that, you know, again, go back to the very first concept that you need blood flow to the uh, small blood vessels of the skin in order for the cells of the dermis and epidermis to do their job to turn over uh, to produce collagen. Uh, but it's also known that if you have reduced blood flow to the skin, <clears throat> that you lose hydration, uh, you develop the signs of aging, and the skin texture, elasticity, and thickness, and all the things associated with aging begin to advance. And so I developed a nitric oxide topical serum that, again, if your body can't make nitric oxide, then we do it for you, and then we fix the reason your body can't. And so this is a dual chamber uh, delivery that if you could combine the one contents of each chamber, uh, mix it together, it generates nitric oxide gas, and you apply it to the face. You can see here 30 days before and after the age spots uh, go away. You can see here the, what we call the turkey neck. This is 30 days. <clears throat> the redness, the fine lines and wrinkles uh, really become much improved after 30 days. And again, these are just before and afters. Very effective at uh, wound healing. Uh, this was, I think, 10 days of just applying the serum to a uh, really almost full thickness wound here and you get complete closure within 10 days. Uh, any type of inflammatory skin disease here, you can see uh, very effective in uh, changing uh, acne spots. And again, this is a 13-year-old. Uh, this is three days use. And it's independent of skin tone and texture. So even in, in patients with uh, darker skin, um, you get the same effect. So nitric oxide is really agnostic to the skin type. The underlying physiology is exactly the same. So understanding all that, this was a 10-year journey, and then we had information that we could, okay, now that we understand how the human body makes nitric oxide, we understand what goes wrong with people who can't make it, now we can fix it. So our, our kind of milestones and objectives were to provide an exogenous source of NO. So if your body can't make nitric oxide, then we have to do it for you. We have to rescue that until we can actually fix it reason your body can't make it. And this is technology we developed, uh, I guess, over 10 years ago in an orally disintegrating tablet, that if you put the lozenge in your mouth, and you put a nitric oxide analyzer in there, you can see that it releases nitric oxide. So clear, verifiable, quantifiable nitric oxide release. There's no other technology in the world that does this. We get peak plasma concentrations within 20 minutes. This was a, a double-blind placebo-controlled a study out of the Hypertension Institute in Nashville. And you can see here that if we take patients with an elevation in blood pressure, give them one lozenge, within 20 minutes, both their systolic and diastolic pressures become significantly lower. 60 minutes later, there's a further significant reduction in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure. 
where a placebo had no effect. In looking at <clears throat> what's called flow mediated dilatation or endothelial function, we see four hours later that a 15 to 20 percent improvement in endothelial function. This demonstrates that we recoupled the nitric oxide synthase enzyme and basically improved the body's own ability to make nitric oxide. So again, provide an exogenous source of NO, which we do through the lozenge that's bioactive because we can see a reduction in blood pressure within 20 minutes, but fixing the underlying problem of endothelial dysfunction. And just to show that it's bioactive, that 10 minutes after the lozenge is placed in the mouth, we see a 13% increase in blood vessel vein. And this is in the carotid artery of the neck. And this 13% increase in blood vessel vein are causing a 34% increase in blood flow. So if you remember back from how I started the, the lecture, that decreased blood flow, spec scans of the brain show uh, inability to perfuse certain regions of the brain. So if we're increasing the blood flow to the brain by 34% within 10 minutes, you can imagine that the spec scan will improve, cognition improves, neurological disease improves simply by restoration of the blood flow. And this was a study by Ernst Schwartz at, um, in Los Angeles taking pre-hypertensive patients, a double-blind placebo-controlled uh, study. And in 30 days, we took pre-hypertensive patients and made them normal tensive by giving them one lozenge twice a day. In fact, 30 days later, we saw a 12 millimeter reduction in systolic pressure, six millimeter reduction in diastolic, highly significant reduction in placebo. There was no effect, no change in heart rate. The six minute walk test, the patients on the nitric oxide lozenge were able to walk significantly further, demonstrating a functional improvement of the heart, uh, placebo, no effect, and then a quality of life questionnaire about the physical and mental composite score, those taking the lozenge showed a significant improvement in quality of life uh, parameters. This is some cool uh, kind of imagery using thermography. This is a 49-year-old female chronic smoker with uh, Raynaud's syndrome. That's a microvascular disease characterized by cold hands, cold feet. And you can see 10 minutes after taking the lozenge, we open up the small vessels, refuse the digits, um, and most importantly, simply you get complete symptomatic relief of the Raynaud's and pain and coldness associated with this disorder. And this was a study by Ed Lee, an endocrinologist in, in Florida, that took patients that had stable carotid plaque for the previous three years and did nothing more but to put them on the lozenge, one lozenge twice a day for six months. And after six months, came back and observed that their plaque, carotid plaque, had decreased by 11%. So 11% plaque regression in six months. Very impressive results. And then I'll take you through um, really a very important and probably the most gratifying thing I've done in collaboration with some physicians at Texas Children's Hospital. There's a group of patients born with a condition called arginous succinic acid urea. It's a urea cycle disorder. And these patients are born without an ASL enzyme. This is the enzyme responsible for, along with arginous succinic synthase, converting citrulline into arginine. And so without this enzyme, you get a buildup of arginous succinic acid, and that's the basis for the diagnosis. So an underlying inborn ear metabolism, urea cycle disorder, their primary clinical presentation is hyperammonemia. But the physicians noticed a number of collateral uh, symptoms seemingly unrelated to the underlying hyperammonemia and the neurological uh, urea cycle disorder. They have liver dysfunction and cirrhosis, blood clotting disorders, neurological dysfunction that appeared to be independent of the recurrent hyperammonemia, resistant hypertension, and then kidney disease. And the question was, was this more than hyperammonemia? And so in collaboration with them, we published this in Nature Medicine in 2011, but we discovered a new protein complex and really a higher sophistication of regulation of nitric oxide. It's the ASL enzyme that tethers the ENOS enzyme to the membrane. And then this protein complex really provides uh, a sophisticated way of <clears throat> intramolecular shuttling of substrate. So arginine comes in, it's shuttled through the ENOS enzyme to get nitric oxide, provided the enzyme is functional. Then you get citrulline as a byproduct. And then the citrulline is shuttled through ASS and ASL enzyme to generate arginine. And then it's the arginine that comes from citrulline through the urea cycle that goes to make nitric oxide 
And so you get regulated both spatial and temporal control and regulation of these substrate shuttling to make nitric oxide. And so it became apparent that if you don't have ASL, as in these patients, this protein complex falls apart, and it's probably the best genetic model for complete nitric oxide deficiency. And clinically, if you look at the blood pressure profile, at five years of age, this was a single patient <clears throat> that was diagnosed. You see, for 10 years, his blood pressure was very poorly managed, even on standard pharmacotherapy. And in February of 2010, I believe he presented to Texas Children's Hospital in the intensive care unit in hypertensive crisis. Uh, we realized then it was a nitric oxide related problem. Uh, the physicians decided to dose him with isozorbide, which is organic nitrate, it generates nitric oxide. Blood pressure was very well managed for a couple of months, and then he started developing tolerance to organic nitrate therapy, which is standard. And then uh, came back to Texas Children's, taking 20 milligrams four times a day, I believe. And then we put him on the nitric oxide lozenge. His blood pressure normalized, I believe, within four hours. So we can completely overcome the, the non-responsive or the resistant to standard antihypertensive drugs as well as organic nitrates simply by utilizing the technology we developed to give the body a exogenous source of NO that's not involved in tolerance development, as well as trying to fix the underlying uh, nitric oxide production pathways. Within five months after starting the nitric oxide therapy, his uh, heart disease had completely normalized. This correlated with an increased number of circulating endothelial progenitor cells, uh, and his kidney disease uh, resolved within, I think, two to three weeks. We stopped spilling protein in the urine. So very important uh, clinical observations with uh, this restored in the production of microtoxin. <clears throat> and I'll take you through kind of some non-invasive measures of vascular dysfunction. This is a three-minute test that's really looking at structure and function of blood vessels. Uh, you're looking for type 1 and type 2 blood vessels, which means that the vessels are soft and compliant with no plaque. Or when you start to get into type 4, type 5, type 6 blood vessels, these are stiff arteries a lot of plaque built up and they become non-responsive and non-compliant and tells us that you have advanced vascular disease. And so if you just take these patients now, and this is a 74 year old female that had type five blood vessels, 90 days later with the nitric oxide lozenge, we turn her into type one blood vessels. So in three months, basically corroborating study the observations by Ed Lee that you can change the vascular structure and function by restoring nitric oxide production. Here's another patient, type 4 to type 2 in 60 days. 60-year-old um, male, type 4 to type 2 in 60 days. It's a really some uh, really important observations clinically on non-invasive measures of endothelial function that show without a doubt that if you restore nitric oxide production, primarily through this nitric oxide lozenge, then you can basically uh, prevent and reverse vascular disease. So what are the steps to treat chronic disease? Obviously these are acute kind of traumatic uh, injuries, but the principles are the same. So you give the body what it needs and it'll heal itself. You eliminate toxins. How do you do this? Remove infected root canals, use an infrared sauna to detox and then drink and bathe in clean water. Restore the production of nitric oxide and then apply good nutrition to restore missing nutrients. Then we apply the voltage to maintain cellular potential. You can do this through these devices. You can do this through grounding, walking barefoot outside on the grass or on the beach. Uh, but this goes back to basic biology and cellular biology, what the cell needs to, what the body needs to make a new cell 